thought, oh man, that would be cool. It's a huge agricultural pest. Everybody knows about the two-spotted spider mite, and yet I don't really have a very strong background in mites. I mean, I guess I'm stronger than most due to the degrees, you know, where we understand about mites, spiders, and scorpions, and, uh, and even lobsters and crabs, because they're all arthropods to a certain extent. But now I got a chance to delve into the mites, and one year later, I mean, there were jaw-dropping moments during the, this process of looking at the two-spotted spider mites. So I sat down, and I, and I wrote uh, a report on this, and uh, I'm in the process of looking to see where this is going to go. But now I feel that I've got so much information about the two-spotted spider mite, and I have been able to determine with relative accuracy what it is keying in on, why it is doing what it's doing, based upon just looking at the frequencies that I was able to decipher. So in your, in your mind, that's incredible. In your mind, what is the purpose of mites and the two-spotted two spotted spider mite specifically after that much research? I mean, I can't think of anyone who would be more qualified to say, I think this is the purpose. I think this is why they're here and what, what they serve to do. They have several purposes. One, they cannot clean out water that well, so they have to wait until things are dehydrated. And so was able to back this up. And so once the dry conditions uh, become relevant, the, uh, the spider mite does well. It's always there. It's always doing what it's doing. You can find them in almost every agricultural field on the planet. But their numbers do not grow exponentially, literally exponentially, until dry conditions are met. So once the cell starts to dry up and the water is no longer a factor, it becomes considerably easier for them to suck out the contents of a plant. So yeah. that's the one thing. I have Go ahead, question. Trent. I have a question really quick because I'm dealing with two spotted spider mites in the hops currently as we're speaking. And it's been my observation that utilizing cytoplasmic plant fluid analysis, i.e. sap analysis, that there is a correlation to salt levels. And when I say salt, I'm specifically talking about chloride. Um, also, there seemed to be some correlation to ammonium in the plant sap and mite pressure, but I think it's more due to chloride. And so my question with what you just said is that could make sense. If the plants are in a stressed, hot, dry environment, they're respiring or perspiring um, rapidly because of the environmental temperature above ground and they're uptaking moisture and there's not enough carbon sink or other elements to balance out the available salt that that plant is uptaking, the moisture leaves the le leaves in respiration and the salt accumulates, which then would make sense with what you just said, why we have a higher incidence of mite pressure and them replicating and becoming a major issue. Does mm -hmm. any of that make sense? Uh, it does. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense at all. I wasn't able to find a connection specifically with the chloride ion. However, having said that, we also understand what the chloride ion uh, concentrations increase. The BRICS levels go down. Mm. And BRICS levels being a measure of plant health. So when we have high chloride levels, the plant is now compromised and the BRICS levels go down. And uh, there is a research paper out there which was finding that the two-spotted spider mite optimally was looking for uh, plants between one to two bricks uh, when it was, I think it, it was getting exact, like 1.6 to 2.2. They had some exact figure. Uh, I have, this is not research that I have done, but this kind of gave us an idea of how, uh, at what point, and not just that the plant is unhealthy, but it needs to be brought down to a certain point before the mite actu actually feeds, because we all know, and I think you guys know as well too, that the mites are ubiquitous. They're, they're found in Washington, as well as they're found in Florida and everywhere in else. Africa. Yeah, I mean, it's a ubiquitous pest right now. And because of that, their numbers don't increase exponentially unless you have very particular situations that result. And so these are some of the situations that we're discussing with them. When these situations come about, their numbers increase dramatically and it can be stopped almost immediately just based upon knowing what they like and what they don't like.